I think we'll begin without taking much time. It's already five past five here in India. So hello and welcome everyone to the Be Waste Wise uh, webinar of the month. Thank you so much. I can see so much uh, of participation from the attendees already for this particular webinar. As you all know, I'm Akanksha Singh. I'm the community builder at Be Waste Wise. And as most of you all have been knowing that we have been organizing such waste dialogues on a monthly basis, addressing the need for uh, knowledge dissemination on uh, waste management since 2013. We are a non-profit organization and we have been uh, bridging this waste solution expertise uh, worldwide uh, for over a decade now. Um, if you see the value in making such diverse sustainability dialogues uh, such as these uh, free of charge, then we request you and support you and request you all to support us in this mission. We every donation um, of uh, each one of you would help us create and curate and produce such uh, waste dialogues on diverse topics. And we encourage you all to do check out our website and donate. We will be sharing the link to the donation page over the chat as well. Now, moving on to the this, today's uh, topic of discussion, uh, we will be evaluating the current uh, situation and identify the strategies and means to achieve the zero waste city goal uh, by integrating various uh, scientific concepts. Additionally, our panel will also uh, will explore the progress of circular economy initiatives in India and the way in which the Indian government associations and corporates are supporting these initiatives through variety of uh, policies and funding mechanisms. To moderate this webinar today, we have with us uh, Professor Dubey. Professor Dubey has been moderating our webinars for many years uh, now and as now a very familiar face uh, with many of our regular audiences on our platform. He's currently a professor of uh, resource recovery and circular engineering at the uh, Department of Civil Engineering, as well as the chair of School of Water Resources at IIT Kharagpur. He's a very well known um, globally as a waste resource management and life cycle analysis uh, expert um, at his, uh, you know, I, I mean, uh, and a decarbonization expert. And his research has been uh, funded by several national and international agencies. Today, Professor Dubey will be moderating this webinar with very knowledgeable panel on this topic. We have uh, Nupur Tandon, who is the founder of Pro Waste Concepts and a TEDx speaker. Nupur uh, conceptualized and started Pro Waste Concepts with a vision of creating a future without landfills. Her company has been creating various models of uh, decentralized waste management across multiple private and government-led institutions and communities. Second, we have on the panel uh, Priyanka Singh. She is the program lead at uh, the Council on Energy, Environment and Water. At the council, her research uh, focuses on air pollution, waste management and circular economy. She is dedicated to conducting uh, scientific investigations using real-world data. Her objective is to provide policymakers with evidence-based insights, facilitating informed and scientifically grounded policy decisions. We also have uh, Nitesh Chandrakar, who is the Sector Portfolio Manager for Waste with Agency France de Development. He uh, gained more than a decade of uh, practical experience uh, during his tenure at organizations like UNDP, Finnish Society, Aga Khan Development Network, Giz International Services, etc., where he has been working with large and small teams, helping them to plan out and implement uh, waste management projects that have gained a uh, foothold and been scaled up in most cases. Uh, so now before we proceed uh, to the discussion, I would like to make a few announcements. Um, this webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded on our website and YouTube channel. We request you all to please use the Q&A function for your queries to the panel, and we encourage as many questions as possible to make this discussion even more uh, fruitful. Uh, we request you to use your chat function only to share your comments to network. And uh, we request all the panelists to please share your uh, LinkedIn profiles and your details on your uh, companies so that people can uh, know you and uh, you know interact with you even uh, at the later uh, you know, post the event. Uh, chat function is for you to comment your, you know, to share your comments and your opinions and anything that you want to, uh, you know, talk to. Uh, the question, the Q and A section is for the questions. So we would request you to please use both the functions separately. Um, as uh, I mentioned, uh, I mean, some questions might not be easily, uh, you know, answered during this short span of uh, one hour. We would make sure that these questions are being passed on to the panel later on and are answered very well. 
So uh, without further delay, back to the topic and over to you, Professor Dubey. Thank you. Thank you, Akansha, for, uh, for the introduction. And again, thanks to the panelists for joining us today. Uh, and also thanks to all the participants. I see more than 100 uh, participants already there, and we expect this number will probably will go up as well. So good evening to all from India and based on wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So as uh, you know, the topic is on looking at the zero waste and circular economy. Uh, so that's what we are going to get insight on this particular topic from the three experts, which uh, you got the introduction right now. So when you talk about zero waste, essentially zero, uh, what it essentially means is that we are trying to conserve the all resources. And when you're talking about the conservation of resources, you are actually looking at responsible production, responsible consumption, having proper reuse methodology, try to do the resource recovery from different products, packaging, material, and you should not do open burning and those kind of stuff. There should not be any discharge to land, water, or air. So no pollution should be there. And if and then try to minimize the environmental and human health impact. So that's the whole goal of zero waste. So when we say zero waste, it's not literally means zero, zero. It, uh, it means the zero waste going to the landfill, going to the dump sites, uh, so that we have less, uh, that there is no impact on environment and human health as such. Uh, so if it, and at the same time, if you talk about the circular economy, they're kind of interlinked together. When we say circular means, again, try to minimize the waste, no waste being produced in the first place. So they are kind of linked with each other. That's why we try to put these two concepts together as part of today's webinar. And we have three esteemed panelists to hear from them. The way we will go uh, for our audience that uh, first uh, I will request each of our panelists to have an opening remark for around seven, eight minutes. And then uh, we'll open the floor for your questions. And as Akansa mentioned, please put your questions on Q&A. One of the uh, kind of signature of this Be West Voice webinar series is we try to answer, we try to engage with you. So please feel free to engage. I see very esteemed uh, uh, people on, on there. I know some of the people on the attendee list in, uh, personally as well. So we have a lot of people with lots of experience. We'd like to hear from you as well. So without further delay, I'll uh, uh, go ahead and ask uh, the first panelist and uh, we'll request uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Priyanka uh, to talk about, see if she, she comes from the policy background. So if she, if uh, Priyanka, if you can give us an overview of the different policy intervention that several government agencies are trying to implement to achieve this zero waste goal uh, within this framework of circular economy, if you can highlight some of the salient points and what is the present status, what are the bottlenecks or it's, these are just the broadly what I want. We want to hear. Of course, the floor is yours for next uh, uh, seven eight minutes. Priyanka, please. Uh, thank you, Professor Dubey. Good evening, everyone who has joined in, and thank you, BVS Twice, for providing us a platform to speak on this very important issue. And thank you, Akanksha, for the introduction. Now, uh, before I actually delve deeper, and thank you, Professor Dubey, for setting the context because this is how I'm going to start. So I have uh, a very little question so that I understand what uh, our audience thinks about. Uh, so you have actually thrown multiple uh, meanings to zero waste, but I would like to understand from our audience that what do they think about when they hear the concept, I mean, or this word uh, zero waste. So here uh, you will see that uh, uh, there is a there is a question. So what comes to your mind when, uh, let me know if you can uh, see the uh, question here on the screen. Can somebody confirm? Okay, right. So there is a QR code. You can actually scan that or you can just type in your responses on the chat box here. So uh, I'll give one minute to everyone so that we can have some answers. And then we move on to, you know, explaining the concept itself. Right, I can see some responses uh, on the chat box uh, where maximum reuse and recycling of waste. 
So it's 515, we'll wait till 516, and then we'll see if there are responses. Okay, there are many responses actually. I am not sure if you can, I mean, all of you can see the word cloud which is being you know generated here. So can somebody confirm if you can see the real-time responses that we are getting? Yes, we are, we are able to see it. Yeah, so zero waste is equating to circularity here. So there is no waste to landfill, there is recycle reuse. Okay, now that people, I mean, we have 39 responses out of 100 people and then there are some responses in the chat box also okay so somebody says that uh, zero waste doesn't mean uh, that we are not generating any waste it means how we are going to deal with it and treat the generated waste right i think uh, we have uh, sufficient responses to actually delve deeper into the meaning of zero waste so this is no waste to landfill reuse recycle and circularity which is showing up as the most common thing that comes to our mind when we talk about zero waste so let me stop sharing i i can actually uh, you can keep chiming in your responses and uh, maybe at the end of it in the interest of time i'll go ahead and stop sharing this right so uh, why i basically ask this question to everyone is before I actually talk about the current uh, situation in India and what is actually happening and what are the initiatives, there is an interesting exercise that US EPA did on the very definition of zero waste. So they evaluated different states, how they were looking at uh, uh, zero waste, the term zero waste. So if you, uh, if you look at how Washington is looking at uh, the uh, defining of uh, uh, zero waste, then the focus is on resources. So they have targets for zero waste of resources. This is how they are defining it. Now, if you look at some other place like Texas, so they are looking at uh, from the, so somebody, I mean, most of the people have also uh, uh, chimed in the result uh, uh, that there is no waste going to landfill. So there they have targeted that in their policy for zero waste, they have targeted that there is no waste going to landfill. Now, if you look at uh, a place uh, like Hawaii or uh, there's, there are other places, they see this as an approach where you are changing lifestyle behavior. And we have something which was, I mean, uh, which our prime minister uh, in uh, 2023, they released something called Mission Life. So that is basically looking at changing lifestyle and behavior. So this is how zero waste is actually looked at when we are thinking about or dealing about this topic. Now, combining everything together, and as Professor Dubey rightly mentioned, zero waste is a comprehensive waste management approach that should aim to eliminate any kind of harm to the environment. So that means there is no discharge in terms of waste. There is no discharge to air that pollutes the air. There should be no discharge to the water. So combined now, if I particularly look at the waste management, it prevents to waste prevention. So basically it starts with no waste. So when a, a company or an organization is producing something, they should think of ways where they are not utilizing resources. So when I talk about resource consumption, I just want to throw some stats here. Within the span of uh, last 50 years from 1970 till 2015, you would be surprised to know that our resource consumption has actually increased by six times. So that means uh, we are uh, in any types of resource that we are, uh, I mean, for any type of product making that has increased sixfold. Now uh, our resource extraction, so th which is limited, this is also increased by 2.5 times. So that means the first concept of reduce has to happen at the very uh, level of generation. So this is about, uh, and how you can reduce that. So it means that you have to prevent the waste, you have to reduce the waste, you have to recycle the waste, and you have to strive to ensure that the products are designed to be repaired, to be refurbished, and upcycled and not downcycled. So this is how we are looking at zero waste concept. 
now if i look at the policies uh, and uh, so uh, the way i'm uh, uh, i'm dividing the whole current status in india in terms of policy and guidelines there are four things that we should look at first we should look at the laws and policies which are existing then there are government initiatives the schemes which have come up that support the zero waste concept or the circularity third is there are private players uh, so private sector initiatives and fourth uh, which is i will not say last uh, but the least uh, it is the social sector initiatives something uh, like the think tank space research uh, fraternity the, the uh, awareness generation all of that so uh, when we talk about the laws and policies we have some really beautiful laws and uh, i take pride in saying that india is one of those countries who have come up with the separate set of laws and guidelines for separate set of waste uh, so you have under the umbrella act of environment protection act you have six types of rules so bounded under the environment protection acts which tackles six types of waste which is solid waste plastic construction and demolition e waste and your hazardous waste and biomedical waste other than that we have separate rules which are battery management rule fly ash rule so any type of waste that you can think of it, the, there is law for that now in addition to that the new concept of extended producer responsibility so we did uh, at uh, cw we did an analysis within ourselves i mean the publication is not out yet but i'm just sharing the analysis results so if we look at the other countries the global north and the global south india is one such country that has actually developed guidelines for different sets of eprs for different kinds of waste and why now we have a guideline which is mandated under the law for uh, plastic waste construction waste which is the recent draft waste oil we have uh, we have your e waste uh, epr so all of this is in place now when we talk about the government initiatives uh, when uh, swachh bharat mission came in we actually uh, overhauled the very concept of municipal looking at municipal solid waste so if i see a uh, uh, municipal solid waste management that starts for me it starts with the uh, inception of these rules in 2016 so uh, and then there is swachh bharat mission which was kind of uh, doing everything for cities like it was providing financial resources it was providing guidelines it was also providing uh, mandates for cities uh, urban cities uh, uh, urban as well as rural so uh, there is swachh bharat mission now when we talk about the resource efficiency there is national resource efficiency policy 2019 so everything that we talk about zero waste this policy aims at you know reducing uh, resources uh, the waste of resources and uh, uh, resource conservation gen i mean uh, reduction of waste so this policy aims to do everything then there are players like niti ayog so niti ayog has a very particular cell i mean for circular economy dedicated cell for circular economy and they have uh, they have plans to come up with 11 circular economy action plans for 11 sectors so uh, anybody who is interested i can name the sectors but uh, it's they have identified 11 sectors and uh, there are 11 sector specific circular economy action plans that are going to come up uh, and then uh, there is uh, uh, there are uh, other initiatives like atal innovation mission so for the thriving entrepreneurship and uh, you know to encourage innovations in this domain because what we need in circularity is innovation so there is a one mission that supports that there are uh, i mean when we talk, uh, talk in terms of implementation uh, implementable schemes there are policies for biofuels there are uh, policies for uh, encouraging bio economy so we have pradhan mantri jeevan yojana so this yojana basically it's jaiv indhan vatavaran anukul fasal yojana so which uh, which aims to utilize or provide financial uh, support to integrated bioethanol projects so basically conserving biomass which is otherwise burnt or dumped or uh, uh, sent in i mean uh, uh, left in water bodies so there is policy that supports uh, the and this these biofuels you can create multiple uh, biofuels like pellets briquettes you can also use uh, bioethanol so you can do under that yojana there is govardhan yojana for specifically it started for rural uh, areas but now in the recent budget you have finances 
uh, as close as uh, 10,000 crores for setting up uh, uh, CNG and bio CNG plants. Then there is uh, uh, MOPNG has come up with Satat Yojana that aims to use this biofuel for transportation. So uh, the one factor where uh, there is no uh, air pollution, I mean, there, so in this, through this, these schemes, you are basically reusing or basically using this uh, waste, which is otherwise burned and uh, converting them into fuels. So uh, all of this uh, is uh, on the government uh, initiatives and schemes. Now, if we look at the private sector initiatives, there are multiple uh, beautiful organizations who have come up with some really good ideas. Like there is a CII that, that, that has started a green core rating system. There is FICI that has a circular economy symposium. So which where, I mean, like we are doing here, the, this symposium aims to, you know, exchange knowledge on the initiatives. So basically providing a platform which is necessary for everybody to know. There are, uh, there are certain uh, organizations like Tata they, who are doing multiple things for uh, circular economy and uh, reducing waste. So uh, all in all, what I say that uh, in India, the existing system is kind of supporting but uh, now moving on to the challenges. So while we have everything that I have said in place, the main challenges are one, the very understanding there is of zero waste. So there is lack of awareness. Now that few people like 200 people here who have registered or 300, we are talking about zero waste, but the, the understanding and you know the understanding of the con concept and awareness about everything that exists it is not equal when we talk to policymakers. So the differentiation between a recycling and a circular economy, this is, I mean, if you talk to, I mean, I'm not talking about all the policymakers, but for them, this is the secondary, uh, secondary yes. thing that they are doing. So there is a confusion between recycling and circular economy. So there is confusion. Then even uh, uh, in the business just, uh, yes yeah for the interest of the time i think oh right right on. sorry uh, sorry just okay so, yeah. uh, so uh, the lack of awareness the limited infrastructure while everything is there there is limited infrastructure to uh, you know uh, support everything all of these policies third is the lack of data so for me these are the main three challenges and sorry for uh, i mean taking no, more than what yeah. i yeah. yeah so this is all from my side sure thank you thank, thank you. you very much priyanka for laying, laying out uh, the different initiatives that the government is uh, taking as well as the private sector and some challenges which actually the challenges will be explained further by uh, nitesh as well so nitesh uh, the, uh, from you of course we would like to hear the challenges as you mentioned and then also some uh, what are the good practices that you see in, uh, in this domain uh, in India? And since your organization works uh, across the world, uh, what are the, some of the good practices uh, is happening in the circular economy, zero waste domain? Please, uh, floor is yours. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi. Yeah. So first of all, thank you very much, B Waste Wise, Professor Dubey sir, and uh, Akansha for the opportunity. Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Nitesh and uh, at present I'm working as Sector Portfolio Manager at uh, Agency for Friends Development uh, and uh, I'm looking after specifically waste sector. I will just introduce the program I'm working on presently, uh, a small introduction that uh, I'm working on Cities 2.0. Uh, it is C-I-T-I-I-S. Uh, I will upload the uh, guidelines of the program in the chat uh, afterwards. Uh, so it's basically uh, uh, we support uh, so AFD uh, Agency for Friends Development. It's a banking institution. We provide soft loans to public sector. So basically in India we provide loans to government of India. Um, so this Cities 2.0 is a loan we have provided to Maua. Okay, and from Maua to state it goes as a grant. Yeah. Okay. So uh, and. We are supporting actually smart city missions in India. So uh, Priyanka does a number of initiatives. One of uh, them is uh, smart city missions and we are supporting it. So basically, uh, this is a challenge. Actually, you will say waste challenge where uh, this is smart cities, uh, these hundred smart cities, which is identified by government of India are eligible to apply for this uh, grant from Mahua. And it is a type of competition where after further rounds and evaluation, uh, we select the cities. As of now, uh, we are funding around 
3500 cr to 18 cities in india 18 smart cities uh, which we have selected uh, in the operational guideline you will get to know uh, rest everything um i will come uh, on the challenges i will just continue what actually uh, priyanka was on uh, so basically before um, uh, Uh, joining afd i was working for uh, giz undp and finnis society so i have worked a lot on ground and i will just continue to bring some on ground realities so there are number of schemes number of policy uh, which uh, priyanka already discussed and we are very well established if you see the uh, you know top surface of uh, our uh, system what when it comes on ground what happens uh, actually and where uh, we are finding it difficult or challenging uh, if we want to attain circular economy either or uh, zero waste firstly if, if if i will just start with one urban local body you say okay how how it say so so waste management is completely a urban local bodies uh, thing okay they they are all uh, implementation uh, authorized units uh now if you see in in our in india the system which is running as of now is that urban local body used to outsource everything to private parties okay in most of the cities okay for door to door collection uh, for processing for everything now i just want to bring up one challenge i think is a contracting system surely which uh, uh, we must look on uh if you see a city like uh, successful cities like indore uh, who are always working on this qc bs method as quality and cost based system okay of contracting but if you see number of cities in tier 2 they are just going for lower lowest l1 okay so whomsoever is bidding lowest so for example i have put out a bid as a ulb for door to door collection whomsoever is bidding the lowest uh, is a part of system so they 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 are just getting opportunity to enter the system but if you see the difference in indore the per ton of waste is being processed at 3500 rupees inr and in haridwar i will say it's 800 rupees so you can see the you know uh, difference that how indore is performing and uh, how haridwar is performing this is something uh, uh, first thing secondly when we bring this people uh, into the urban local body system you see multiple concessionaire in a city is a huge challenge okay first door to door collection it's one co- one contractor then there is a processing unit for a mix waste it is one contractor then the, now material recovery facility or recycling unit is coming in the urban local body it is another contractor okay now we talk about leakages okay so it's it's very simple i will just link it to the contract system when i say that 800 rupees per ton if somebody is taking for haridwar and somebody in indore is taking for the same thing 3500 rupees and now we are thinking that at mrf at recycling unit whatever uh, recyclables uh, valuable which should come is not coming okay so at the end the operator of the mrf is getting nothing okay so this type of challenge is everywhere every i think most of the cities okay that most of the if if they have material recovery facility in the city it is going under utilized okay this is very very basic uh, thing i see uh, it is a real challenge so like one concessioner for everything should be a solution but uh, right now also we face challenge in terms of skills uh, secondly land availability it's a huge challenge so now there are number of schemes there are csr there are private entities which are putting lot of fund into the waste management uh, sectors the challenge comes when land if if we are talking with ulb okay everything is fine we will do everything they will support us in every manner they will say yes land is available every but till the time you start the things on ground okay so what my uh, experience what i have worked Uh, on ground says that whenever urban local body is offering you a land which is ready to use don't take it like as a as an funder or as an implementer okay this will delay the things okay surely using dump sites already in every city which has is a best option you should go for okay where also the community will not do any agitation and it's win win situation for everyone and if i will tell you the example uh, rishikesh rishikesh nagar nigam itself 
don't have their own land okay it is on the land of some trust so you just see the extent so land availability is a huge task i will also just give one example that we 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 organized one innovation challenge where for rishikesh uh, uh, trashcon was the winner uh, from bangalore and they wanted just like 1500 square feet of land to establish the technology and when time came to implement the things on ground land was huge issue and then we transferred the technology to munikireti the adjacent uh, urban local body so land i think is one of the huge issue then i will come to informal sector okay uh, it's very well known that as per swm 2016 we want to formalize the things we we should formalize urban local body should formalize the informal sector bring in, uh, them to into the uh, system but the challenge again occurs that we uh in 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 the economy what they are generating now and the economy or something monetary benefits what organizations or ulb is offering them uh for formalizing okay there are some good practices like swachh model in pune or in ambikapur where informal workers made cooperatives and they are doing whole thing actually uh, right from door to door collection to everything so there it works but somewhere uh, where system is like door to door collection is done by some outsourced private agency and we are asking informal workers to support them in you know collection segregation with just a salary and some social security right now it is not looking feasible uh, in indian context uh, to be sure then uh, one priyanka talked about satat scheme the government wants uh, uh, like ministry of petroleum natural gas wants okay i will just give one example on uh, what i have experience on land like gail gail who who is interested in doing some initiatives like this okay now again what i will link is it to the last uh, challenge is land availability so gail come to x ulb they say okay uh, we will establish it what we want they put the condition we want uh, 20 acres of land we want 150 tons of segregated organic waste okay now so segregation is the like challenge okay now when when it comes to ulb ulb says that how 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 come this 150 tons of uh, organic waste availability uh, will be offered and at the end nothing uh, these are all challenges that this type of schemes are developed at uh, you know uh, high, higher level but on ground it is quite difficult to uh, implement due to certain challenges uh, secondly i talked about pune swachh model i will just talk about some good practices uh, which is happening pune swachh model is one of really good practice which i just mentioned ambikapur model uh, the the garbage clinic model or uh, the collection of waste via self help group okay that is one of i think successful models and uh, uh, easy to implement model uh, in country that's why i think uh, uh, whole chatisgarh after ambikapur implement that model and in swachh sarvekshan also as a state they got uh, first uh, position for 19 2021 there are some good practices Uh, happening uh, in private sector for example uh, if everybody knows recycle that kl uh, recycle they are doing some good initiatives like uh, they have developed uh, developed a digital platform where they uh, ask this buyers and sellers of uh, plastics or other dry waste to register themselves and okay they are just connecting so i think data is a huge issue okay everywhere in our country and via this type of digital platform uh, it it is really easy to trace that where the waste is actually going or going or not uh, secondly one other model of recycle only uh, is drs system uh, so in mountain region uh, you see it's it's a uh, like uh, again uh, huge issue uh, so uh, i think in man ki baat only our prime minister uh, two or three years back he said uh, regarding uh, the littering in kedarnath after which recycle uh, 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 with the local administration worked on it and they came up with this depo- deposit refund scheme okay where i will just explain it where for example uh, if you are buying a, a water bottle 
instead of 20 rupees they will charge you 25 rupees or 22 rupees okay they have a scanner on the bottle and when you will return it back to the collection centers they have collection center established all around uh, kedarnath this year actually they are uh, they have implemented it in all the four dhams kedarnath badrinath gangotri and yamnotri uh, so when you will give it back you will get the 5 rupees back so this is i think uh, uh, running very successful in yeah. uttarakhand at least so, so case, yeah, these are, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to yeah. wrap up. Yeah. 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 So uh, I think these are some of the uh, good models uh, which is happening on ground and uh, yeah, I, I will wrap up with saying that, yes, we have everything in place. We have schemes, we have policies, we have, uh, you know, very stringent EPR system, everything in place. Uh, I think uh, the capacity of urban local bodies has to be strengthened via different measures so that all the on-ground challenges which I have talked about uh, can be uh, looked after. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Nitesh, uh, for giving that uh perspective of some good good practices happening in both public as well as private sector. So now we move to the, our uh, third panelist for the day, uh, Madam Nipur uh, Tandon. Uh, so uh, Madam, as you are working with several uh, uh, the UL, ULBs as well as with several uh, campuses and all that, we would like to hear from you like, uh, like how to make this zero waste community happen, whether it's a decentralized system, centralized system, and I know that you have been working with the, the social aspect of this uh, in this domain as well. So floor is yours for next uh, around eight minutes or so. Please go ahead and share your experience with us. Thank you, Professor Dubey. Uh, good evening, everyone. And thank you, Be Waste Wise, for having me here. So it was great to listen to the uh, other uh, panelists, uh, Ma'am Priyanka and Nitesh. So you've already set the tone that, yes, our country has laws. There are a lot of uh, 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 programs by the government and we've heard in Nitesh talking about the challenges. Yes, there are major challenges at the ground level. So pro-waste concepts since uh, more than 10 years, we've been creating models uh, that are holistic and they have approach which is towards integrated uh, and decentralized waste management systems. So we've been working with the bulk generators of waste and we work at the grassroots level, uh, mainly to, to bring about this change uh, towards the behavioral uh, aspects. And we are working with the communities so, so that they understand what waste is, they, they change their attitude, how they uh, handle waste and they redefine and rethink their behaviors. I have, I would like to share some, uh, some slides. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, can we, uh, is it visible? Yeah, it is. You can put it on slideshow. So I'll do that right away. I'm presenting, yeah. uh, no okay. problem. Oh, okay. 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 So, um, can you yeah can you change the slide for me akansha yeah. yeah so um our vision is a future without landfills we all know that our we have these, these infamous landfills in our country so we nudge the community the common people to answer these questions where is the waste going and why why they are not doing what we, they should be doing and what should we do to make our cities free yes there are laws Yes, there are a lot of uh, policies. Yes, there's a lot of uh, uh, will. I say I see a lot of will, which is there in the in in, in these uh, people have a will to do something about handling their waste. But there is a problem of a systemic change. There is a gap between all these how these stakeholders and everything works at the ground level, and uh, eventually, you know, around eighty percent of waste is ending up in the landfills. And uh, Nitesh and uh, and and Priyanka would know how much is actually getting recycled. It goes into the circular economy system. So, uh, go ahead, Akansha, please. Yeah, this is what we see, and this is the situation everywhere. We we keep on going ahead on the slides, Akansha. And uh, we all know that. A uh, lot, the huge amount, the percentage of the budget allocated for waste management is used for transportation of waste in our in our in our country. That is the biggest problem. And why it is happening? Because at the ground level, we are unable to manage that waste. 
waste management is not just pick up waste from one from one place and take it somewhere else. It 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 requires a robust infrastructure. It it requires systems at the ground level, which start from the point where the waste is generated, which is and it is segregated at source. It is collected, transported, and safely disposed of. Next second, yeah. So we we come up with the new R's. Of course, everybody knows reduce, reuse, recycle, but I am I am working with the people to uh, to make them rethink about waste. They have to rethink about the consumption patterns. They have to rethink when they are uh, going to bin their waste in the correct color coded bins, and they have to also rethink when when they you know uh, uh, what is going to happen to their waste. That is very very important. That is the first R, and then of course redefine. We have to really learn that cleaning is not waste management today most of the people uh, communities the campuses it can be public sector or private sector we, i go to some high end apartments and some some SEZs and the it industries they are all cleaning they love to clean but they the failing to understand that waste management and cleaning are absolutely two different things concepts so they have to unlearn they have to rethink and they have to start doing waste management and they have to stop cleaning cleaning would just mean that they just collect their waste and send it out of their premises and they assume that the urban local bodies or the the contractors or the waste management some uh, some uh, entrepreneur or some machinery will take care of it i'm sorry that is not the case so we have to start doing waste management redefine waste management and then of course redesign that's the other, other r which we are really focusing on we have to redesign a bin system we have to redesign the collection processes we have to redesign the 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 how the each category of waste will be stored and all and each category of waste will be safely disposed of so this is the kind of process we have to redesign on any campus or on any uh, uh, bulk generator or it can be a hospital it can be a school it can be a, 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 a you know a, a, a SEZ wherever the, we have to redesign the processes to ensure that all waste categories are taken care of. So here, I just want to uh, show some visuals from some of our campuses where we've been working. And it, it is mainly to, uh, to, to showcase that what kind of micro level work goes out, goes down at the ground level to ensure that waste does not get, go into the landfills. Our vision is a future without landfills. So for that, we we have set up processes at the ground level, which which include uh, putting the right bins, putting the the right uh, signages, uh, putting the right uh, uh, the training of the housekeeping team who was uh, who 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 was in charge of handling waste, and of course putting bringing in technology, bringing in uh, technology providers recyclers for all categories of waste so that from point a to point z it is taken care of so that was the poster and this is the is a process of stepwise model which we ensured uh, which is executed at the ground level to make sure that waste management is happening so we we uh, we put in a lot of effort uh, you know, to to educate people, to to uh, to educate the waste generators, and also to educate the uh, the people who are handling waste. We did the review system, and we we spent a lot of effort on on preparation and infrastructure. That is what is really missing in our country. Yeah, we talk about waste management. We have so many schemes, but we we do not spend a lot of effort and time on creating infrastructure infrastructure for example uh, uh, you know we need uh, composting pits we we need uh, a cart which will which will collect various categories of waste which will a lot of ic material is important today you know the common man does not understand waste management you know technology alone cannot solve it it is a social problem and we need to invest with the people I mean, I have seen, I have worked with some um, urban and rural uh, communities and 
I, I realized that everybody had bins. The, the urban local body had uh, distributed bins to them. And there was also a vehicle which was coming, which, which had green and blue boxes. But still, everything was mixed. The, the, the residents were, were uh, using the bins to store water or to store their, uh, their uh, you know, kitchen material. So uh, we have to realize that we have to connect with the people at the ground level so that laws which are so beautifully written, so that the schemes which are so beautifully done needs to be implemented and executed. So these are the processes which we followed. We created uh, SOPs which were uh, which were uh, you know uh, designed, customized for the campuses, and then we implemented them and executed. So there are a lot of based mapping has to be done on any campus or any school wherever you go. Uh, it is very important to map. You know, just putting those color, beautiful, high, uh, I know, beautiful design color coded bins is not uh, going to uh, ensure that your waste is handled well. That is the easiest thing anybody can do. You can have color coded bins and you can bring in, house, bring in housekeeping teams, which are huge, but still your waste will go to the landfills if you don't put in the SOPs in place. Mapping is important because based on the mapping, on all facilities, you will are, you are going to put in the bins and the signages. We go ahead. Yeah, this is the kind of segregation we need. We require so that all the biogas, uh, you know, units or composting units in our country can run. I have come across so many institutions, public sector and private sectors. There is they have technology. They have biogas plants. They have biomethanization. They have OWCs. But I'm sorry to say they are not running. They're not running because they don't get segregated waste. Just last week, I was in Delhi and I saw there's a beautiful uh, biogas plant which is just, uh, you know, defunct because they are not getting waste because everything gets mixed and it comes in plastic covers. This is the kind of segregation. After segregation, collection is happening on the facility, on the campus. You know, the community is, 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 no, is, is, we have worked with the community at the ground level. The bin system, it 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 has to be well, you know, signages have to be clear and it, it has to educate the people who are coming and, and putting in waste. So there again, you see the color-coded bins and of course also for e-waste. This is how waste is collected from the mess and, and then it is, you know, taken uh, to the composting pits. We are collecting bio for the biomedical waste, sanitary waste. For all that, we have created bins and collection system that is separate. This, are the, this is the poster we have done for medical center and the labs. Mm -hmm. lab, lab waste is hazardous. So we have a combination of biogas plant and composting pits on the campus to make sure that all biomass goes for composting every day. Next, Akansha, please. Yeah, I think we... Can you uh, wrap up now? Yeah. yeah. Yes. This is our MLP is going for an and thermocol. A lot of packaging. Quickly, we'll just go on the to the side. Yeah. Again, reduction of waste is prime. Most campuses, you know, we've seen a lot of uh, paper, plastic, and uh, cutlery and plates being used. We work with the housekeeping team very, very closely. We ensure that they are educated. We enable them. We empower them so that they execute waste management practices on the campus. These are very important stakeholders. This is how secondary segregation is happening. And then we ensure that all waste is taken. That, that is the process which we ex implement at the ground level to create zero, zero waste campuses so that we have future without landfills. So that was the slides. And um, yes, uh, we are on a mission and there is a huge gap between the stakeholders, which is which is why we are not getting the desired results in our country that I, I would like to again, you know, pinpoint. And it is very important that at the ground level, uh, we work with the communities, with the people, because they don't even know how to differentiate various categories of waste. That, that that is what uh, you know ne we need to understand uh, we have to uh, you know set up systems we have to create systemic changes and and the gaps uh, 
which uh, have to be you know uh, worked on then only we can uh, create our societies which are zero waste and and not send an ending waste on sure. in the land thank you so much thank you thank you thank you very nice and very it's passionate okay. about the uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, clarify that uh, we are already on the timeline, but we would request that we can, you know, extend and uh, please uh, answer all the questions from yeah. the attendees. And attendees sure. will be taking another 10, 15 minutes to wrap up. So please hold on and you can still ask questions for the panel and panel is still open. Uh, so uh, we can extend the time. Thank you so much, Professor Dubrin. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pancha. So yeah, so as uh, 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 Nupul, you mentioned that uh, capacity building, uh, uh, both yes. uh, it's just intellectual capacity, physical capacity, and uh, like I'm, I'm also involved in some of these cities 2.0 project right now, where we are cities are trying to come up with a biogas plant and a material recycling facility, assuming that they will get source segregated waste. But at the city level, hardly 10% is coming source segregated. 90% is still coming mixed. So that's why, unless we do that, how this pro although we can come up with all these projects, but uh, to make them really viable. So let's get into the questions. We have several questions out there. I uh, thank you for answering some of them already. And other questions also, if you're one of the panelists, if you feel like that you can answer them, please go ahead and do it. Uh, but uh, we'll start taking the uh, uh, So Nitesh, there has been a question which you also uh, express interest to answer live in terms of uh, from Rob and the similar question is also at the end as well in terms of the funding like the funding of it with the CPR the plastic credit carbon credit and all that so you have seen the question so can you go ahead and answer that yeah uh, so one one question I think is on sustainability right uh, that uh, there are number of private entities which are coming in there are number of funds which are coming in uh, and via that grants uh, ULB in ULBs we are able to create infrastructure but afterwards when this implementation agency and funders are uh, not there after three years or four years or five years and there I said that uh, the foundation lies in the uh, like capacity of ULBs because at the end, because this these funders or implementers from private sectors, they will not be in the city for long, long time. Okay, they will come, they will uh, implement model and then the replication of the model or to sustain that model uh, comes to urban local body. So here I think capacity building of urban local body uh, is very important. One of the example in India is Goa. For example, Goa is, has their own uh, this um, waste management corporation, Goa Waste Management Corporation. So they are dealing everything uh, under that. Okay. So uh, now, now every city is trying to come up with the uh, you know uh, separate cell for solid waste management, who will look after uh, uh, to sustain this type of programs in India. But uh, I agree that that is a huge challenge. But uh, there are uh, urban local bodies like Goa, Pune, and Indore uh, who are doing great. So there was some question on the funding mechanism as well, isn't it? Is it that uh, you know, the, how this will be realized without current political... The, the Rob's questions uh, that he is talking about. Okay, the three of men have answered that already. Okay. So yeah. Priyanka, there has been some questions on uh, which you have uh, listed that you're planning you want to answer uh, like in terms of which type of waste handling is most problematic in developing countries like India. And there's a couple of questions that you had... Uh, we can go ahead and answer those. Uh, yeah, and once you answer it, you can say that this has been answered. So that is also right. Yeah. So let me start with the type of waste handling which is most problematic. So the answer is very simple: for which we do not have the infrastructure. So the last uh, step in the waste hierarchy is landfill. We don't want that. So before that comes processing and treatment. So if I mean there were some questions on uh, hospital uh, settings and that how do we manage uh, waste for hospital settings. Unfortunately, uh, even in the municipal solid waste, you'll see that there is third category called domestic hazardous waste, and most of that rest, waste is actually sanitary waste, for which we have the guidelines, but all of it ends up, uh, I mean, uh, saying that all of this sanitary waste also needs to go to biomedical uh, waste treatment plants. Then there is hazardous waste treatment. So if I have to list down on what is the capacity, then I will say that we don't have the secured landfills for hazardous waste treatment. Uh, I don't want to go to the nuclear waste category because that's a very, very peculiar category, but uh, biomedical waste and uh, uh, your hazardous waste is, uh, I mean, these two categories, we don't have uh, infrastructure. 
also we don't have uh, infrastructure sufficient infrastructure like i said is a challenge uh, for other types of waste but organic i mean it disintegrates on its own but it has the potential to contaminate everything that it mixes with so uh, uh, these are the problematic so i mean my answer is, i mean uh, and while i can rank but uh, every waste if it is not tackled properly uh, it is it is a problem in india but uh, i would rate biomedical and hazardous waste as the most problematic waste now uh, there was a question which where i uh, said that okay so uh, what are the primary funding sources particularly pushing circular economy and zero waste in india unfortunately swachh bharat mission and smart city mission these are the only two uh, missions that i see that provide capex to um, uh, i mean uh, these infrastructure building and swachh bharat mission also has some uh, way then there is finance commission grant so if you look at the 15 finance commission for million plus uh, cities they have dedicated funding under the million plus challenge fund for solid waste management specifically so these are the uh, sources of finance other than i mean it is not primarily dependent on csr uh, of the listed categories in the schedule there are companies depending on what their mandate is not every company is actually looking at the uh, looking at spending uh, csr money on waste management so no that's not right Now, not all organization are spending their csr money there are many other ways where they can get visibility like education and other stuff right so uh, it's not really on waste management had that been there you will see that uh, i mean around all the uh, uh, companies or industries you will see that waste management has taken uh, i mean the first rank if i would say that so industrial waste is another uh, problem so uh, i i think that is done uh yes so anisha joshi asked about and this is something i am particularly interested in uh, speaking about so you talk about the wong model we have those models unfortunately in india we don't have a customized model so we did some analysis within our organization on the models that estimate emissions uh, so the the very basics of any models is what you put as an input you'll get the similar kind of output so if you put in uh, an input which is bogus you will get the output as bogus right so uh, when i talked about the challenges in data so first you need to generate data and then customize the model which is den uh, i mean developed by us epa so there are many models that est that estimate emissions but unfortunately they have to be customized to indian standards and there are research organizations like iits who are working on uh, you know developing such models but for now i don't think i mean we are still using igs and there is um, there is another model called um, sweet tool which uh, estimates emissions and then there is model uh, like you mentioned that warm model so uh, yes so uh, the roadblock is that we have to customize it and for that we have to understand our own supply chain well right so uh, that is answered yeah. here Uh, yeah i think all those that i actually wanted to answer yeah, yeah uh, just sure. answering one more and then uh, making it done so can you share some ways to treat legacy waste yes so, so legacy waste i mean there are uh, targets for treating legacy waste but if you want a best case study i think andabad pirana site is one such case study where they are using inert for road making so they have contract with nhai and the recoverable uh, rdf they are planning to send it to cement plant so that is one good model that you can refer to uh, for legacy waste treatment i think i'll uh, uh, yeah. uh, i mean sure. move in sure let us you wanted to chime in yes also? yeah 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 just wanted to add uh, on the category of waste i think plastic i think is one of the huge issue and uh, particularly in plastic uh, i i just want to focus uh, on this uh, multi layer uh, packaging mlp so which is i think a huge problem whether it's about infrastructure but before infrastructure the collection of the mlp is a huge uh, uh, problem like uh, if you work uh, if you see the work of informal sector if i say uh, who are picking most of the recyclables from transfer stations or secondary points okay if you ask them if if they go for the collection of uh, mlp it takes huge time also because it is very uh, you know it, it don't have the type of market like pet or any other oh. type of uh, plastic in india so mlp i think it's a huge issue uh, secondly i saw some more questions uh, like uh, mamta jain uh, has asked question on data uh, that why not uh, 
Uh, yeah. We develop a portal, so there are number of portals. Okay, we have a lot of data, so data is there. That's what I'm saying. The data quality is of there. data is questionable. Yeah, quality it? of data is a question. You you can get lot of data on Swachh Bharat uh, Mission portal, uh, Swachh Sarvekshan portal, amount of uh, generation or MRFs or recycling units. Everything is there. The numbers are there, but I don't think that if you go on ground. it's a, a, yeah. a reality then there is one question on uh, somebody is planning to establish a, a material recovery facility in noida uh, just uh, I, i just want to uh, let if if you are a private entity uh, and if you are not using uh, government land uh, surely then uh, you are out of like uh, huge challenge but uh, the process is like that if you get the land uh, to establish material recovery facility before starting the things on ground you have to uh, fulfill the compliances at uh, state pollution control board that is consent to uh, establish okay when you get the approval on consent to establish where you submit all the documents with your plan layout your machineries the emissions the water usage and everything then uh, you will get that consent to establish and then you can start the things on ground and after consent to after your construction is done uh, there is one more round of inspection after which they will provide you consent to operate so i think that this uh, consent to operate takes around 15 to 30 days and consent to establish also it takes one month to one and a half month mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh, yeah and and by any chance if you are, uh, are planning to establish this on government land uh then you have to be very much aware that uh, somebody has asked that why not uh, there are ngos if there are any ngos who identify the pockets of land which comes under government so the government is providing the land which is under government only which is under urban local bodies uh, statute but the problem is that uh, nobody wants um, you know um, uh, waste processing units nearby yeah. their home or their locality yes. that is the huge problem that's why i'm saying that that's if we are using Yeah. Yes. In yes. Not yeah. In yeah. Not in my backyard. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying that if you are going, you just go that okay. You uh, uh, you provide me the dump site. You process the waste, uh, whatever area is required for me, and that will be win-win situation for everyone. Community, you will be and uh, the entity. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you on that. Uh, so uh, Nupur, there has been some questions they were uh, asking, particularly from you on. Uh, I saw that. Uh, I think maybe did you answer that online? Or? I answered a few uh, okay. on the on the quick Q&A portal. Sure. Uh, others, if there are some more, can you if I can ans sure, answer? Sure, sure. So there has been some question which I think you can. Uh, of course, there is a question on uh, should we go for a waste energy plan, uh, especially when our seventy percent of the waste is uh, waste is wet organic waste. Uh, so that is, and then what should be the approach in the rural area? so you want to talk about that yeah so waste to energy plants yes um we always see that we think we can we can no just uh, copy the waste and put up a waste to energy plants but we have to understand that because our organic waste we have 70% our waste to energy plants will not be as successful because the calorific value will come down so the first step is segregation you know and we have to take out the organic waste and send it for composting or biogas and then waste energy plant should be set up only for waste which cannot be composted or which can or, or plastic which has such high value uh, which cannot be uh, you know which should be recycled wte can be set up only for categories of waste which do not have value you know mm -hmm. so uh, otherwise uh, uh, energy plants are not going to work in india segregation is must waste energy hai ya nahi hai but segregation has to be no, there no segregation you cannot do yes. there was and then there was something she wanted to about the rural area what uh, they should do rural Again, area for rural also unless you have the segregation because the plastics are coming yes. up in rural areas in a big way too yeah. and let me tell you rural area waste uh, quantum is very very less the the base major problem there is there is no processes for you know collection of waste in rural area and those people do not care they become so intolerant about living in those kind of situations and dumping waste in their water bodies they think it is normal so there we have to go and nudge them we have to educate them that what you are doing is not right in rural area we also see the very common practice to burn plastic during the winter months you know it is ho horrible that kind of 
you know emissions they uh, they're just getting emitted and they they sit around and you know to to they feel that it is the plastic burning would would give yeah. uh, give them some warmth so they so lack of, of awareness uh, education too. has yeah. to happen in rural areas there is no problem of funding there's no problem of you know resources but they don't have education and awareness so there a lot of human involvement and has to go into the rural areas so and uh, is a, that is, is what my uh, learning has been so i've seen that also in uh, so many un un uh, say not that big cities but a small city ulbs as well in towns uh, they have been burning a styrofoam and other thing during the winter months yeah, yeah. Uh, just sitting around and inhaling everything yes yes so, and yeah. i think rural areas are a little simpler because the quantum of waste is very yes, less very and then so if little effort we will see a beautiful change it is just that they, they, they don't understand that and many years back they had only organic waste which they had cattle and they would feed it off mm -hmm. and they had no plastic it is only with this and majorly they have mlps rural areas have more mlps than high grade plastic i have seen mm -hmm. so um, what do we do with mlps nobody is there even the kabadi walas or the uh, rack pickers they don't want mlps so what do we do for that and also a lot of disposables are getting into our rural uh, rural areas now which was not the case few years back so mm -hmm. there should be policies here again priyanka i would like to say policies that we we have to ban uh, plastic which is less than 50 microns and and ban the disposables that is the first step towards keeping our rural uh, rural areas and any city cleaner that is a very very you know i, I strongly recommend that sure sure there is a question which is of course let's say how much time it will take to fully clean the society of course the answer it depends <laughs> <Whatever>. how, <laughs> how how like what how you want to take the approach like uh, and uh, yeah. how quickly you want to implement those approach and you understand the situation uh priyanka you wanted to say something on certain yeah please go ahead yeah just on the bit where somebody was asking about uh, waste to energy so just want to mm -hmm. actually clarify the concept of waste to energy so there are multiple things we should not uh, really think that waste to energy means incineration there are multiple ways where you can convert waste into energy biogas for one reason yeah. we have multiple schemes right where you are converting so yes for organic waste i would suggest that other than composting waste to energy plants do make sense but uh, there is another question so related question which i will just make mark done so there is somebody okay. asking that uh, the, i mean there is huge problem of managing plastics in the country what are the initiatives taken on country and state level for managing them and what is the scope of material and thermal recycling so uh, abhishek my answer to you or question is that yes there are initiatives and there are policies in place like we have sup ban that actually so what you are saying i mean 120 micron is what is uh, allowed right now right but the challenge is implementation in uh, yes in absolutely level. and uh, so uh, if i talk about i mean there are certain uh, states where we have data so there are industries which are banned so there is no registered entity that is manufacturing sup but unfortunately our uh, we have a predominant informal sector which is uh, really uh, you know making this all of these sups and plastics which are problematic and uh, about the recycling and thermal recycling i think we are very i mean we are at a stage where we have uh, almost solution for everything but all of these solutions fail because they are not financially viable as thob rob mentioned and then for making them financially viable you have to correct your supply chains which starts with segregating waste so for any facility to work that facility has to get the optimum not just the quantity but the quality of waste so that is necessary for anything to work on i mean work so for example indore uh, the facilities are working fine because they are getting that sort of waste uh, i think uh, so that's from my side yep. yes thank you thank you so uh, uh, it is there was a question on qcbs uh, for indore i think they have already answered that i don't see it yes. anymore now yeah yeah so yeah. so there is uh, some question on uh, looking at the can you can we said more light on the energy contents and it is the governing factor for any uh, okay because infrastructure sector is a big energy uh, guzzler like you needing sustainability circular solution so you're basically talking about that uh, when you are trying to see cement from the waste demolition concrete it can be used as a supplement but then to achieve that you are actually adding a lot of energy uh, there 
So for that, uh, usually what we go for a life cycle analysis or something, you have to look at the, what is the net energy ratio? Uh, of course, economics comes in picture. So those things can answer those, those, those aspects can take care of that. Anything uh, you, anyone wants to add on that? Uh, if you can feel, feel free to do that, although we are already 6.15. So we are, uh, 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 and then uh, we have this question from Goro. Uh, it's a long question. India is now a most populous country. We have many industries are there. Okay, so it's more on water, talking about many policies and laws on paper, but they're getting implemented on ground level. So I think, uh, Gaurav, we did answer your questions directly or indirectly as part of the other answers, which is the bottom line is that, see, yes, uh, uh, rules are there, regulations are there. We are not able to implement those rules and regulations on the ground because of lack of some sort of capacity, whether you talk about physical capacity, mental capacity, intellectual capacity, training of the manpower, or as, as well as uh, proper equipment on the ground as well. So we have to, as many of the speakers did mention, all the speakers mentioned that we need to work on uh, making uh, those things possible. Uh, Deepak uh, has a question, ma'am, can you please tell us about the private partnership in solid waste regarding circular economy? So Priyanka, do you have to want to say something on that? Right. So there are some really good cases on the private partnerships. So I happen to work for a firm called Saha Zero Waste. Right. So uh, and they have some really good models. And um, the, so there are other entities like Hasri Dollar who are, I mean, working with the private players where the uh, tech parks or uh, bulk waste generators. So you'll see that the public private partnerships are working very well uh, in cities like Bangalore. Right, at least for the municipal solid waste. For plastic, we have other. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I know for JSW who has come up with uh, a really good model for pl plastic waste management, and uh, so these are the cases uh, that I would like to, you know, uh, in. Uh, so yes, so these are the models that I can think of. There is Swatch in Pune that is tackling uh, all types of waste, which is working well. So yes. Okay, I think we have taken care of all the questions and we are at 6.17, 17, 17 minutes past the time. So and just, I think uh, um, before we discuss, I'm, I'm sure all the attendees will have a lot of queries. Um, yeah. We already have a lot of queries which we have missed out in the chat function. I okay. uh, request uh, that you know they can connect on the pan to the panelists on the LinkedIn profiles um, and uh, you know touch base with them to have one-on-one -on -one, uh, interactions if possible and if for networking or for business uh, purposes. Mm -hmm. um, we are well uh, beyond our time. Professor Dubey, should we wrap up? If there's some... Uh, I think so. Unless, uh, unless there is some closing remarks from any of, any of the panelists, if you want to say something at the end. Or otherwise, uh, uh, Nupur, uh, do you have... Uh, yeah. yeah. Maybe Somebody last, had... Last... Some Last sentence is yours and then we'll close. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Thanks, thanks for that, Professor. <laughs> Somebody had asked in the quest chat, a question answer that who's responsible for waste management? And I clearly would like to say that we all are and all stakeholders have to come together to solve this problem. You know, if we just say that policymakers will solve it or uh, ULBs will solve it or the technology providers will solve it, and, and people are responsible. We all are playing the blame game here in our country. Yeah? Until unless we all come together and sync and, and work together, we are not, we'll be unable to really create zero waste in, in our country. So that is what I would like to say. We have to uh, you know work together at the ground level and realistically to save our country <laughs> from, from waste. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, over to Akansha. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so Pereka. much. Thank you so much uh, to all the panelists, Nupur, Priyanka, Nitesh. Thank you for taking time out and sharing your knowledge and experience on this topic. I know this one hour uh, is not sufficient and justifying to the kind of work that you all have been doing in your respective uh, domains. So um, we hope to see another uh, part to it, Professor Dubey, if that's possible, maybe a yeah. second edition or maybe more focused topic where mm -hmm. we can have the panel back and you know discuss um, yeah. more uh, specific and I think it is a uh, quite uh, well uh, you know uh, active uh, uh, you know interaction that we can see from the audiences. Thank you, mm -hmm. audience. Thank you, the attendees for their queries. I think maximum forty-five questions we have answered, and there are much more which are already there. There are comments there 
for the panelists. So I think once I will be sharing the web webinar chat details to all the panelists so that they can also get a sneak peek yeah. into the kind of comments that uh, we've been getting from these uh, people. So thank you so much. And as, as I mentioned, this uh, webinar is recorded and I request whoever has not been part of it, who are not able to attend, they can uh, see the recorded version of it on the YouTube and on the uh, BVSY's uh, website. And if you would like to stay updated on future events, uh, please subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on social media. We would also request if you have some suggestions on the topics that we want to do with the moderators, then please do uh, write to us. You can uh, you know, connect to us and uh, share your uh, suggestions. So thank you to all the panelists and to the attendees. Good day to all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vice, and good day to everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.